We just dodged a solar storm that missed us to the east, but the sun has fired another at us. Will its aim improve? Those stories and more in the news this week. Solar activity continues to be interesting this week. We had a solar storm launched right at the edge of the Earth strike zone, but it missed Earth just to the east of us. But wait for it. Bam! Do you see that right there? That is yet another solar storm that's launched in the Earth strike zone this time. It's hard to tell how much of that storm has actually been released towards Earth because some of it did fall back. But as we see this long river-like coronal hole, that's going to be sending us some fast wind right on the tail of that mini solar storm. So it looks like we might get yet another chance for Aurora just in time for the holidays. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, you can see we are still extremely low when it comes to the X-ray flux and by proxy, of course, the solar flux. But the good news is we started to rise a little bit right around the 20th. This is when region 2692 emerged on the solar disk. It's even popped a few B-class flares. And then on the 22nd, we had that solar storm eruption and that caused a bit more flare activity. So this is all good news for you amateur radio operators and you should enjoy some marginal level propagation easily over the next week. Switching to our solar storm conditions, you can see the last time we actually reached storm levels was back on the 17th. This was from some fast wind from a coronal hole. Now these coronal holes are getting a little bit smaller as we approach solar minimum. So it didn't really last all that long, but it was enough to bring us some decent aurora uh, to high latitudes. Since then, things have settled down. We did again get a little bump into unsettled conditions from that solar storm that missed us off to the east. We kind of got a little bit of turbulence and wake from that. Now things have settled way back down. It's actually very quiet, but this won't last because we do have that mini solar storm with a fast wind chaser that's going to help us bring in the holidays. And although this recent solar storm wasn't strong enough to bring aurora down to mid-latitudes, it still gave us some gorgeous aurora shots that really set us up nicely for the holiday. Like this one from Finland. Imagine trying to take a picture of the aurora and getting photobombed by a reindeer. And some gorgeous aurora was seen in Norway. We had beautiful aurora in Sweden. Can you spot the Christmas tree? And it was seen in several places in Scotland. And as we crossed the pond, it was seen on a flight to Canada. And in several places in Manitoba. We had beautiful aurora in Saskatchewan. And of course in Alberta. And also in British Columbia. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And what you can see on the backside is a totally different story than what's on Earth's side right now, folks. The sun is completely quiet. It's like on the backside, it's going... So what that means is that once we get through this solar storm and fast wind over the next week or so, we're going to have a sun that looks like this, and it means that the first week of January could be very, very quiet. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the hit from that mini solar storm with a fast wind chaser. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting unsettled conditions until that storm hits, then minor storm conditions easily with a small chance of a major storm. At mid-latitudes, we're still expecting unsettled conditions, when, and then active conditions once the storm hits. But we do have a good chance for a minor storm, maybe even a small chance for a major storm. It all depends upon how the storm unfolds. But this is good news for your aurora photographers because that means she's going to have a good chance for aurora over the holidays. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is still in the green, and this is the way it continues as we approach solar minimum. The nice thing, though, is that we have region 2692. It's taken center stage. It's not a threat for big flares or radio blackouts, which should make you GPS operators very happy, but it is uh, creating enough solar flux to pump us back into the marginal levels for radio propagation. And that should make you amateur radio operators extremely happy. So in this type of condi uh, conditions will continue easily over the next week, maybe even up to the new year before things begin to die back down.
So the space weather this week continues to keep us on our toes. We have that mini solar storm that's going to be followed by some fast wind. So your aurora photographers should be extremely happy because we might have aurora just in time for the holidays. Now you amateur radio operators, we have region 2692 that continues its passage on the earth facing disk. It's upping that solar flux and it's keeping that radio propagation in the marginal levels. So that's going to be a good boost for you. You're going to have to deal with that solar storm a little bit, but that's just for a few days and you GPS operators you don't have to worry about radio blackouts and as long as you stay away from the zones that have aurora during the solar storm everything's going to look pretty good for you too. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching. And if you haven't yet, go pick up a copy of the latest issue of Popular Science Magazine and flip to page 49. It's got an amazing article by, about the space weather community and the space weather woman uh, by Sarah Scholes. Thank you, Sarah. You did just an amazing article, not just on this community, but on the Space Weather Prediction Center, the, the uh, scientists behind it, and all of the work that we're doing with the AMS. And I'd just love to thank uh, the scientists like Dr. Nariaki. Nita, even Chris Mostel, you're in here. I didn't had any clue that you had been quoted in here, and thank you for such a wonderful quote. Also to all the field reporters that have just lifted up the space weather community and has made all of this kind of stuff possible, to Swipsy and the forecasters there who are making predictions of space weather possible and are making it absolutely the weather of the 21st century. Thank you all so much. You've made this holiday season the best for me ever.